Okay, this is a quick video on using Office 365 Excel to create a basic bar graph. It's also going to be a little bit of a review of Excel so that the terminology works for you. So we're going to go into Office 365. Remember that from that you can click on the App Launcher. Some of you will see that. Others of you will see it laid out like this if you're working in a Word, um, a uh, Microsoft environment. So either way, I'm going to click on Excel. Excel will open in a new window, new tab. I'm going to click on New Blank Workbook. Wait for that to open up. Okay, now a couple of quick notes. Remember that this is a column. In other words, B indicates the column. And 2 is a row. So going across our rows, going down our columns. In general, when we lay out data for a graph, we're going to leave the A1 cell empty. And in general, I'm going to use my series of rows in A. So again, this is our column here, but I'm going to go by row for whatever my horizontal sequences, for example, time. So in this case, I'm going to do days of the week, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. All right. Now another thing that you might want to note is that if I go down here and I click on here and I say 8 and then 9 and then 10, oftentimes what you'll be able to do is grab that, you selected all three of those, grab the corner, and if I pull down, you'll notice that it's going to populate through time in that way. So you can sometimes do use that to speed up putting times in. All right, I'm going to get rid of that. You don't need that right now. Then across the top, I'm going to put some behaviors. We're going to look at the frequency of maladaptive behaviors here. So for example, hitting biting and fleeing. I spell that right. Okay, so those are our three behaviors. Now, Monday, moderate amounts, we're going to say 6, 8, and 7, moderate frequencies. So here are our frequencies for that day. Tuesday, it gets a little bit worse, 9, 10, 9. Wednesday is a really bad day, 14, 16, 13, weekend's coming up, things get a little better, 10, 8, 9, and then so whoever this is is very happy for the weekend, so our behaviors go down, 2, 1, and 3. Okay, so now we've entered our data. The next thing that we want to do then is create our graph. In this case, because we have totals, how many things happen, we're going to go with a bar chart, column chart, and in Excel Online you'll notice right here the tab for insert. We're going to be inserting a graph. So I'm going to click on insert and you'll notice right over here are different types of graphs. And so in this case I'm going to click on column and then a clustered column. That means clustered column you'll see means the different behaviors hitting, biting, fleeing are going to be next to each other as opposed to a stacked column, which would mean they'd be on top of each other. The third one, 100% stacked columns, would be what percent they are. So again, I'm gonna, we're just gonna do our basic uh, clustered column. I'm gonna click on that, and you'll notice that this is empty because I did not select a group of data. Okay? It's that selection that matters. So we're gonna go back and delete the graph area select my data, insert, column, and there you go. Now, I could have done, now, so there's one graph, and I'm going to do it the other way, and I'm going to say I want, we're going to click off that, now it's no longer highlighted, and in this case I'm going to do again, insert, column without selecting, same thing, now what you'll notice here, the other option is here, see where it says select data. I can also use that if I didn't select the data first. Click on that and it's going to ask for a chart data range. All that's asking you to do 
is to select a group of data. So you're going to click in there and we're going to say A1 colon and then the bottom so I only want to here so that's going to be C6 and OK. And you'll notice that what it did is it only put in hitting and biting. So again when you put in a data range you're going to select the top row column designation A1 and then what's the bottom that you want? Well I only want it out to C so I would put in C column C row 6. See where I'm getting those from? C 6 and that's here. Okay, so now I have a second graph. The next piece you need to know. We're going to look at how I've now selected the graph. Brings me back to this. And then we get to the tab by clicking on our graph. We get to the tab that says Chart Tools. You'll notice here that the options for it are laid out here. Now I could also change the type of graph. You'll notice that I could actually go to a pie chart do it that way. We're going to go back to this and now I'm going to put first my chart title. The default is none. You'll notice a little X there means we don't have one yet but I want it centered above the chart or overlay. So I'm going to go above the chart and we're going to call this behaviors and there's our behaviors. That's our chart title. The next one you're going to probably want to use is the axis titles, the horizontal axis, again this would be our days of the week, this is also the x-axis, and I'm going to put it below, and I'm going to say days of the week. You always want to tell us what the variables are. So our variable along the horizontal axis is days of the week. I'm going to go back to my axis titles, vertical axis, and I want it rotated, and I'm going to say here frequency. And you'll notice now I have my title, should be uppercase there, but my vertical axis, my horizontal axis, and then you'll notice here it has hitting and biting. Now that's actually the legend. you notice that I click on that. I could put the legend off to the side like this, and you'll notice that it moves it over here hitting and biting for our two colors. Okay, so that's creating the graph. The next most important thing how do you get it out of here? Well, if you're in a Windows environment, you're going to use Control C to copy this, and you can paste it into whatever you'd like. Um, and the Control V command, again, for a Windows environment, Control C copies, Control V pastes. You can paste this in anything you want. In a Mac environment, uh, a Mac operating system, you would use the Command C and Command V. Okay, so. That's creating graphs. The advantage of working in the cloud is that once I've done this, you'll notice that it says book one. I'm going to just rename that. All I have to do is click on it and say example graph worksheet saving. And now it is saved. So now when I go back to this, and if I look at my Office 365 in Excel, I come back to this some other time, and it's going to give me my recents, and you'll see it right here. So I can always go back to that. It's automatically saved into the cloud. In fact, as you enter the data, it gets saved. Big advantage working in um, the cloud environment. Okay, that's it for creating graphs.